Welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. Actually, I'm the host, Madison Campbell. Today, we're diving into a topic that's been making headlines, vaping. I also want to shine a spotlight on a specific product called Zen. I'm Maddie, and as a future physician assistant, this subject is close to my heart. Let's discuss why some of these cigarette replacements aren't as healthy as some believe. We'll examine some alarming statistics and discuss my concerns as a healthcare professional. Vaping, once considered a safer alternative to smoking, has raised serious health concerns. As of 2021, research reported 1.1 billion smokers worldwide. According to the FDA, more than 2.1 million youth in the United States reported current use of e-cigarettes in 2023, with 10% being high school students and 4.6% of those being middle schoolers. Electronic cigarettes, or e-cigs, were invented in 2003 as a potential smoking cessation aid. They use a battery to heat a metallic coil, turning e-liquids into smoke-like vapor. This e-liquid is usually a mixture of propylene glycol, glycerol, and various flavorings. Nicotine smoking cessation continues to be a key public health focus. The number of e-cig users worldwide continues to rise considerably and was already over 41 million as of 2018. Zin, a popular nicotine pouch product, might seem less harmful than traditional cigarettes, but it's essential to note that it's not without risks. The nicotine content alone can lead to addiction and various health issues. Inhaling these substances, even in different forms, can still harm our health. Elise, my fellow PA student, is gonna help break down some of the explanations of what we're talking about today. Hey there, my name is Elise, and I'm a friend of Maddie's and a fellow PA student. So let's get back to vaping. According to recent studies, acute use of nicotine e-cigarettes is associated with a negative effect on endothelial function, arterial stiffness, and the long-term risk of coronary events. Other studies found vaping and nicotine replacements lead to an increased heart rate, diastolic blood pressure, and augmentation index, along with decreased pheno, or fractional exhaled nitric oxide. You may ask yourself what an augmentation index is and why we even care about these physiologic changes. Lucky for us, our host, Dr. Rutland, is here to break it down. Well, remember the lung is made up of a bunch of pipes that lead to balloons all stacked on top of each other. These pipes and these balloons are made out of cells. And at any given point, these cells can be irritated and this can lead to inflammation of the pipes, essentially asthma, or inflammation of the balloons, interstitial lung disease. The components of the aerosol on a vape pen can be toxic metals like cadmium or other metals like nickel and chromium. Vaping alone can lead to recruitment of white blood cells into the lung, causing a lot of inflammation. Classically, or kind of this newer definition of injury we call e-cigarette or vaping product use associated lung injury, e valley which was caused by vitamin E, which led to the presence of a certain white blood cell, a macrophage, to accumulate in the balloons. So people couldn't breathe. They were really short of breath, and some of these people even died. Vitamin E has since been removed from most products, but the components of the pen remain. When you heat these components, you create different molecules, which can lead to damage of the cells of your lung. You can also disrupt the integrity of the physical barrier of the lung. You can cause DNA damage, cancer. You can reduce antiviral immunity and reduce bacterial clearance. You can even produce more mucus obstructing your airway. I'm not here to compare cigarettes to vape pens. I'm here to tell you that vaping has its own consequences. Let's talk about Zin. Zin is a nicotine pouch you place in between your gum and your upper lip. Push it up, push it up, push it up. The danger of the pouch lies in the nicotine toxicity and the addiction created and the presence of tobacco-specific nitrosamines. The nitrosamines are strong genotoxic carcinogens with organ-specific effects. Oh, what the hell is that all about? That's stupid. <laughs> Two of them, which can be present in Zin, NNN and NNK, are group one carcinogens, meaning they cause cancer. We're learning more and more about these nicotine pouches, so there's a lot more to come. These replacements and their impact on public health aren't just affecting one age group. This impacts teenagers, 
young adults, and even older adults. As a future healthcare provider, I'm particularly concerned about the potential for nicotine addiction and the associated health risks that may arise, even with seemingly less harmful products like Zinn. My future role as a PA includes educating patients about the risks associated with nicotine use, regardless of the form it takes. Open communication and safe discussion will be crucial in addressing this growing concern. Vaping, whether with traditional e-cigarettes or products like Zinn, may have started as a trend and a means to quit traditional tobacco smoking, but it's clear that the consequences are not to be taken lightly. My PA wrote this part. Let's work together to spread awareness and find ways to support a completely nicotine and tobacco-free environment. I'm cool with a transition to a nicotine replacement therapy, but I'm not cool with it forever. If you or someone you know is struggling with nicotine use, including products like Zen, reach out for help. Here's the number. As always, I'm here to provide information and support. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more discussions on crucial health topics. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Again, a special thanks goes out to Maddie, who actually wrote this portion of the program. We'll see you next time.